This is Collected Clan, episode 18. It's just a different season. You know, the season this year at this time is so much different than the season was last year. I'm thankful that we're, for now, in this really, really nice place. Welcome to this bonus episode of Collected Clan. I'm your host, Gregory Byerline. This podcast features conversational biographies, or audio portraits as they've been called recently, of relatable people with real stories of triumph and tragedy, plus successes and setbacks. Stories about everyday people making their mark. I've met a lot of people in my lifetime, and many people come and go. But these people are the company you keep. In this bonus episode, we kick off the holiday season right here at the start of Thanksgiving week with some audio thank you notes from previous guests and a few additional people for whom I'm grateful. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing while you listen, kick back and soak it in. So let's get started. First up is Bethany Torino from episode four. I am thankful for all of the good people of the world that get up every day and do the best they can to make the world a better place, to help those around them, to make themselves better so that they can have an impact in people's lives. And I've just really come to recognize that more and more lately, that there are so many good people in the world. And I know your podcast has highlighted several of them, and I love that. I love the everyday hero that gets up and gets out and does what they're supposed to. And they're the people that really make the world turn. We wouldn't be in the same place as as a nation or as humans without All of those wonderful people, and a lot of times they're the ones that don't get the thank yous and the pats on the back and the free gifts, the goodie bags at the end of the uh, award shows. (laughs) They don't get to have some famous person hand them something in front of millions of people so they can be acknowledged, but they're the ones that really make a difference. So thanks for doing this, and I hope you and your family have A wonderful Thanksgiving. Next up is Tiffany Montero from episode 14, where she shared her powerful adoption stories. I am very grateful for my parents. They went above and beyond for me. And I believe that's the job of every parent. But I know that there were countless times that they were told that there was, you know, something wrong with me or maybe we should put her here or... You know, she's never going to be able to do this and she's never going to be able to, to live on her own. And all of these things that they they didn't accept ever. They never gave up on me. No matter how many stupid things that I did, no matter how many stupid situations I got myself into, they never gave up on me. And I am I am very, very grateful for that because because of that, there are these three kids that are in my opinion, pretty phenomenal. So they're pretty much at the top of that list for sure. Um, Adam, the, 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 the boy, he, he saved my life. As I said before, I, I would not be here if it weren't for him. And I can also promise you, I would not be where I'm at on an emotional level if it weren't for him. He talks to me. He uh, makes me laugh when I feel like I haven't laughed in forever. And he's just so good. I am grateful for him every second. Next up is my friend John J. Thompson from episode 10. Boy, thinking about what to be grateful for this year, what I'm especially grateful for this year, thankful for. There's so much stuff, it's hard to know where to begin. But our family's lost a lot of people this year. Um, We've said goodbye to some people we love a great deal. Uh, Our family has, and I have uh, some friends in the music world, and it struck me how the more people we know, the wider our circle grows, the more people we're blessed to uh, encounter and journey with in this world, and the more... uh, 
the more we are encountering loss. And um, this year there's been a lot of that. And so I'm, I'm thankful for the people that we've been able to know, the experiences we've had. I'm thankful for uh, time with our family. It was in 2006 was a time when uh, I should probably not have lived. I came very close to uh, my final goodbye to my family, and that did not happen. And I'm thankful for that for another 12 years so far of uh, time with them. So I'm thankful for time. I'm always praying that I don't take anything for granted. That's literally what I pray every day. And I'm thankful for all the people in my life, and uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity to make a difference. Uh, and I'm also praying that I never take advantage of that. So uh, lots to be thankful for this year. Uh, lots of blessings, lots of struggle, but the struggle is worth the blessings. So that's what I'm thankful for this year. Here's Bradley Ford from Episodes 11 and 13. I definitely have to say the biggest thing that I'm thankful for this year is have my wife being cancer-free and able to get back to work and, you know, just being able to tackle life for the most part again. That's definitely A, number one. But we've also had a lot of other really cool things happen this year. You know, I'm thankful to finally be at the helm of my own company that's growing. It's a lot of fun just tackling those projects and challenges. Super thankful for my kids. All three of my kids seem to really be finding their way and knowing what they want. And that's a really exciting thing to watch them be able to do that. It's just a different season. You know, the season this year at this time is so much different than the season was last year. And I'm thankful that we're, for now, in this really, really nice place. And it doesn't mean more bumps and bruises won't come in the future, but when you get these reprieves like this, it just shows you that you can get through it. And I think I'm thankful for that most of all because I know, you know, as a family, you can get past those things. And it just makes the future look better no matter what happens. So that's definitely what I'm thankful for this year. Now I want to introduce Ryan Pluckelman to you. Ryan is the host of the East Coast Trail and Ultra podcast. You've heard me mention my love of trail running, and Ryan's show deepened that beforested affection. Also, when I started laying groundwork for my own podcast, he graciously answered many questions, offered encouragement and feedback, and even gifted me a new microphone after several episodes recorded using an earbud inline mic combo. That new mic was debuted in episode 8, and I want to publicly thank Ryan Pluckelman for his generosity. Here's what he's thankful for. I am thankful for my family, without ex- without exception. I mean, that's like the thing that I am most thankful for is my incredible wife, my wonderful kids, my amazing parents, my brothers who I get along with, and then those friends that have become family. And you know, everything else, the running, the podcast stuff, the work, everything else is secondary because it's, it's all about the family. And so Thanksgiving, on this very special episode, I just want to say uh, I'm thankful most of all for my family. Now let's hear from Tony Caldwell, featured in episode 16. I am thankful every day when I wake up that I have the ability and I have the life that I have to where I can actually create all day. That's what I get to do. I get to create. That's what I was destined and like brought into this earth to do. And I actually am lucky enough that I've found a career to where I can actually do that every single day. Being a hairdresser, I, I mean, I do 1,400 haircuts a year, some crazy number like that. And if you think about how many people that is that I cycle through seeing and listening and that story, like I hear so many times how many people do things that they hate doing or they need a new job or they're, they're miserable in some way, shape or form. And I'm, you know, I'm just so grateful that that's not me. And then, uh, you know, as cliche and horrible as it sounds, I am extremely grateful that I am in the relationship that I'm in, the marriage that I'm in. Before I met my wife, I was in a pretty, pretty dark little spot in life. God knows where I would have ended up if she didn't come along. I won't go as far as to say that she saved me. I think it's kind of weird when people say that, but she definitely helped lend a hand and pull me out of the mud kind of deal. And it's 
it's a very powerful thing to have a very powerful marriage. I think you can attest to that. You have a very strong relationship with your wife. And again, our culture today, that's not something that's common anymore. Next up is Jenny Baker from Episode 7. I know everybody is thinking about what they're thankful for. And while I could probably leave you a 45-minute long message about all the things I'm thankful for, ranging from my family to good health and shelter and a good job, uh, the thing that really this year I want to share with other people, I'm grateful for a lot of things, but I am thankful to be a woman in a country where my voice is valued and my voice is heard. I'm thankful for all the brave and courageous women who have gone before me to fight for that voice, to fight for my freedom to vote and to be a participant in this great democracy. And I am thankful that I can pave the way for my Lucy to be heard in the future and to be capable of leading and being a contributing member of this great country. So I'm thankful for a lot of things, but this year in particular... I'm thankful to be a woman, and I'm thankful for all of the strong and capable women that live in this country and all the good that they're doing for us. And now Jenny's other half, Franklin Baker, also from Episode 7. What I'm thankful for this year is people. I am thankful for all the people in my life, my friends, my family, especially my wife, my um, children, and um, I think people are, are definitely what bring me joy this year. And I look forward to adding to that group of individuals that I call my friends and my family next year. Now let's head to New York to hear from our most recent guest, Lauren Phelps, from Episode 17. God, I'm thankful for so many things. It's so hard. I am thankful for a patient husband <laughs> who, who has watched me change paths so many times and has been incredibly supportive and just believes in me. That's so huge in a partner that uh, he doesn't just pretend to believe in me. He actually really deeply believes in me. I don't know if there's much more you can ask for, honestly, in a partner. And... As a new mother, of course, I'm incredibly thankful for Sam, my son, who is just like beyond any dream I ever knew that I had. I'm thankful for the opportunity to live out all of my creative dreams. I hope that everyone will continue to allow me to to live through all of those, through all of those dreams. I've been incredibly blessed that people have supported what I've created thus far. I mean, just I'm blown away sometimes by how grateful I am for that. I know you'll appreciate this as a fellow fur parent, but I'm, <laughs> I'm very grateful for my dogs who were my first babies. And I knew one of your fur babies Sunday who I know that you miss greatly. Such a special, special girl. I'll, I will never, ever forget Sunday. She was so special. And I have two very special ones as well. I have Conroy and Pep, who are 12 and 8, who've been a part of my life for a very long time. God, I could go on and on and on. My life is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I have so much that I'm grateful for, so (laughs) I won't bore you with the long list. Here's another podcaster who has been influential in helping me through this first year of Collected Clan. I'm grateful for David Hooper and the insights from the Red Podcast and Build a Big Podcast that keep me on my toes and consistently improve my game with this show. Hello, David Hooper here, calling with something that I am thankful for this year, and that is community. I'm going to call it one community, the people who make podcasts and the people who listen to podcasts, because I think we're going through a time, it certainly seems so in the United States, of great tribalism. You know, you pick one side, the other guy picks the other side, and it appears that we're very different people, your side, their side, their side, your side. But I think that when you get past that and you actually start talking, you see that people are very similar and that we pretty much want the same thing. And I think that podcasting is helping that because 
it is an interactive media, and it is something that you can do, I can do, anybody can do. So I think it's important for us to have these discussions, find some common ground, and I think that's how we're going to move ahead. Now let's hear a thank you note for my longtime friend, Ginger Eldridge, from Episode 8. This year, I am so very thankful for all the blessings that God has given me and that I have a stable job. I have wonderful coworkers that we have such a good working relationship, even though sometimes it gets really, really hard and stressful in our jobs. We still find a way to uh, lift each other up and keep each other sane in a, in a way. So I'm thankful for the grace of God who's carried me through some really hard years. This year has been a good year, and I'm thankful for, of course, number one, my daughter who has accomplished so much in her young life, and I'm thankful for who she is and the strength that she's showing through through the diversity and the hard times that she's been through. She's seen a lot for her young age, but she has really pulled through, and I think that's going to carry her to be such a strong adult. I'm thankful that she's chosen to enlist in the Navy, and I'm so proud of her for wanting to serve her country. I'm thankful for my home and for the grace of God. I said it before. I'll say it again, the grace of God. I'm I'm just very thankful for that. And I'm going to leave it at that. And through the power of social circles, fellow podcaster Keith Cartwright contacted me via Jenny and Franklin Baker, whom you just heard, and he invited me to guest on his show called 2 Tim 47, where he looks at life through the lens of a runner. And we instantly hit it off and connected on a much deeper level. Visit the show notes to link to our conversation on his show and also enjoy his thoughts here about gratitude. So for me, gratitude always starts with, and I think this grateful life that I try to live started way back with my oldest son, Elliot, who who will be 12 here in December. But when my wife and I got married, we both agreed that we didn't want kids just we had busy lives and just decided in the beginning that if we were going to get married that we were going to have a married life but no kids and then about seven and a half years into that marriage we're driving to town for dinner one night pretty quiet in the truck and all of a sudden I hear my wife say sitting beside me there that God told her that he wanted us to have kids And the truck remained quiet. I just tried to pretend like I didn't hear that. And she asked if I was going to say anything. And I said, well, I'm not going to respond because I thought I heard you say God wanted us to have a kid. And God has not said anything like that to me. So either you're listening to some foreign creature (laughs) that is not our God or you and God have some secret going on that I don't know about. And long, long story short, uh, about a month later, she was pregnant with our first kid, Elliot. So seven and a half years into this marriage, this commitment that we were never going to have kids is suddenly something completely different. So, you know, we had baby books. We had to start reading up on how to be parents. I completely changed my mind. I was all set, all ready now to be a dad. And then in December, actually December 18th, about 12 years ago, Elliot was born. Only when he was born, the morning he was born, it was pretty pretty frightening for a while there. My wife's health was in jeopardy. Elliot was actually born without a heartbeat, so they were pumping away on his heart. Meanwhile, my wife was doing okay after she gave birth. But the doctors are all working on Elliot and trying to revive him. A lung collapses, and it was just a scary moment there, Um, not what we anticipated with the arrival of this first kid. In the delivery room there, Elliot was suffering. Doctors are working on him. And in that moment, I just... Ask God, please, just whatever you can do here. Um, I got faith in you. I trust you that however this turns out, you got this. And 
Elliot ended up pulling through. I ended up going to the NICU at East Carolina University where Elliot was taken. And, you know, in that moment when I looked down in that incubator and saw Elliot and saw that he was well, it was in that moment, I think, when I first experienced gratitude. And that's when I became really consumed with gratitude, started reading a lot about gratitude, writing a lot about gratitude. That's when I started my blog, A Life of Gratitude. And ever since then, I've just kind of looked at life a lot different. I've been a a lot more grateful for really everything around me. Um, In that moment, I kind of learned you just can't take anything for granted. You can wish a lot of things you won't have in your life, and then suddenly this thing appears out of the blue, and you're far more grateful for it than you ever thought you could be. So I look at my kids, and, and I know that they are the birth of gratitude in my life. Next is my friend Chris Creed, host of Nashville Wedding Podcast, whom I've known since my days in wedding photography. We also share a community of faith, and Chris is the very first person to whom I mentioned an interest in starting a podcast. He then offered a ton of info I needed to actually launch. He was even my first recorded conversation to test the equipment and software to ultimately launch this show. Here's what he has to share. I am so incredibly grateful for my wife and my son and our family and our friends and just uh, everything that's happened this year has just been an incredible year of growth. It's been amazing to watch our son grow as at the miraculous rate that he's growing and learning and you know doing new things. And you know, I never thought that being a new father would be so overwhelming with all this joy and love and, and gratitude for life. And I'm just so grateful for that. I hope that this holiday season finds all of you well and warm and that you just feel welcomed and loved and just enjoy it you know enjoy this time with family and friends and uh, that's what i pray for you guys now let's hear from violinist model and many times amuse abby stahlschmidt from episode 15 i'm so thankful the influence and the support and the protection even of my family in my career and my life you know, I know at times I just felt like, hey, you're you're being too close, you're being too protective, but all in all, looking back on the career that I've had, the life that I've had so far, that has been so, such a blessing, so essential for me in getting to the point that I've gotten and even being able to be, I hope, the role model that I am, just seeing how, how necessary that guidance has been, even whenever I, I felt like it was too much at times. So that would be the big thing that I am thankful for. Next, we have some real-life thoughts from my friend David Myers from way back in Episode 2. I'm thankful that in this season, in this time right now, the, the kind of the fall, uh, we're getting close to Advent. Advent is my favorite season in the entire year because I don't know if you're anything like me, but when you get to kind of the fall, I mean, I love the fall, don't get me wrong, but I always feel so tired. I always feel so just I'm out of gas. I need something, you know, and, and that's what Advent is to me. It's a, it's a time to, to wait and expectation and a, and a hope, you know, because I'm tired. <laughs> My wife and I and, and the family, we just experienced a, a pretty good interruption, some kind of, you know, cataclysmic suffering that's pretty brutal. And so we're dealing with that right now. And so for me right now, especially entering this Advent season, I'm I'm longing, literally longing for for rest, and so I'm waiting with expectation for hope. And so that's what I'm thankful for this year. I'm thankful for hope. I'm thankful that there's something more beautiful than we ever imagined right around the corner if we just wait and expect. So that's what I'm thankful for, hope. And finally, the creative artistic awesomeness of my songwriter painter friend, Elizabeth Foster, who is talented with paint, music, and words. As I sat down to think about what I'm grateful for this morning, it started to feel like I was writing stuff down, and it started to feel like I was writing an acceptance speech. Um, Like, you know, the ones on TV, like someone gives you an Emmy, and you list all the producers and the makeup artists and the lighting crew that kind of make you who you are. And I I kind of felt like this this new day, this today is 
it's kind of like that. It's an award, and it's it's not for anything that I've done, but it's a gift for sure. So I thought I'd share just a few of my producers this morning, and <laughs> hopefully the music won't start up and tell me to wrap up my speech. So we'll just see how it goes. But I guess number one, first of all, I'm I'm really grateful for Jesus who loves me and changes me and helps me and heals me. And it's basically because of him that I can even attempt to live a life from a place of gratitude. Super grateful for my husband, who is patient and consistently kind to me on a day-to-day basis, which is no small feat. Really grateful for my daughter, um, who I never thought I'd have the chance to be a mom to. So. That's a huge thing. She brings a whole new level of fun and exploration to my life. That's exploration, not expiration. And pretty much a whole new vocabulary of love, for sure. I'm grateful for my newfound friend I met at the grocery store last month. Its name is Gingerbread Almond Butter. And honestly, like a spoonful of it has the potential to put a stop to any Christmas cookie binge eating. Check it out. You're welcome, America. You're welcome. I'm grateful for my dog, Hazel, who loves tenderly and unconditionally and guards our child in our house like a fire-breathing dragon. I'm grateful to get to do what I get to do, um, which is to paint as many paintings as I possibly can and to create even my craziest sculptures and design all kinds of products that I'm I'm really... So I got cut off, of course, so I'm going to start where I stopped. Um, I'm grateful for the chance to get to do what I get to do, which is paint as many paintings as I can to create my my crazy sculptures and design all kinds of products that I'm grateful for the companies and galleries and markets that give me the chance to do that, which is great. And certainly the buyers that that help me keep the lights on. So really thankful for that. I'm grateful for drivers out there in the world who, even after a long day, will let me into their lane without flashing any symbols of unloveliness. That is definitely a gratitude. I'm grateful for podcasts like this that really explore the beauty of the everyday and the everyday person and their collective experiences. Thanks, Gregory, for your your vision for making it all happen. And I'm grateful for listeners, which, you know, listening is a kind of kindness in itself, a sacrifice of time, and it's evidence of your curiosity and desire to see good things in this world. And... Gosh, I'm grateful for the Blue Ridge Mountains. I get down on my knees for the Blue Ridge Mountains. Thank you, Lord, for those guys and the changing leaves. Oh, my goodness. So beautiful. I'm also grateful for friends and family who think differently from me because it stretches me and it grows me and it's humbling. And it's already taught me a lot, especially in the kind of crazy confusion of today's politics. And I'm just really grateful for them. Okay, that's about it. And I'm sure the music is playing now, telling me to wrap it up. And if it is, I'm just not grateful for that. So, But there are plenty of things I am. There you have it. Real-life thank you notes from part of the clan I've collected and introduced to you this year so far. Man, this is rich. So much to be thankful for, certainly. Did you hear the common thread? The thread that connects these messages, that connects us all? The thread that really matters? Listen closely again. People. Family. People. Family. People. Family. 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 People. People. Family. Relationship. Family. People. People. Family. People. Family. Community. Wife. Family. With people. 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 Family. 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 Those people. Family. Family. Brothers. Family. Wife. Daughter. Mom. Family. Wife. People. Family. Son. People. Family. People of the world. As you prepare for the upcoming holiday season, keep this common thread in mind. Even beyond the holiday season, this common thread is what unites us. It's the common ground, our basis of community. Whether we agree or disagree about ideas and philosophies and worldviews, we need each other. Let's do our best to reduce those symbols of unloveliness being flashed around the neighborhood. So with that, I want to share what I'm thankful for too. 
Foremost, I'm thankful for my family. My ever bride Megan of 20 years and counting for far too much to list here, but namely for those three little M's she cares so greatly for, sun up to sundown. Molly, Margo, and Miles, you're a fantastic wife, mother, teacher, nurse, caregiver, child development professional, and chief operations officer of our little world. For my parents, both immediate family and step family, my sister and stepsisters and their families, my uncle and my outlaws, I mean my in-laws. For each of my grandparents who forged the way for me here and also have gone on before me to where we'll be reunited one day. Grandma, I really wish you could have met Megan while you were here. For my friends and the outstanding people I've met and collected along my journey, collected not as objects, but as treasures. For health and wellness and energy that keeps this vessel moving at the breakneck pace of life, for creativity that provides for my family and allows opportunities and outlets like this podcast to celebrate the everyday heroes in my world. One more thing before the music starts. A few lines from the 18th century German poem by Johann Christoph Friedrich von Schiller, it's a fantastic name, which was adapted by the great maestro Ludwig von Beethoven, another great name, in the fourth and final movement of his landmark ninth and final symphony. A few lines that we know as the Ode to Joy. Joy, bright spark of divinity, daughter of Elysium, fire-inspired we tread within thy sanctuary. Thy magic power reunites all that custom has divided. All men become brothers under the sway of thy gentle wings. Whoever has created an abiding friendship, or has won a true and loving wife, all who can call at least one soul theirs, join our song of praise. That's what Thanksgiving is all about. A recording of the full poem, read by your host here, is available for your listening pleasure. Really great words and theme that are appropriate for any season. And it's available in our producer circle at patreon.com slash collected clan. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash collected clan. If you find value with what we're doing on this show, your financial support creates even more gratitude. So thank you. You'll find other bonus segments there too. For links to each guest's full episode, pop over to collectedclan.com slash thank you notes, where you'll also find a special Thanksgiving gratitude themed playlist to contribute to your daily soundtrack. And finally, a bonus episode of thank you notes is incomplete without a big thankful shout out to my friends Worldwide Groove Corporation for this show's original music. They are a super talented musical power couple who generously allow their song Mimosa from their album Chilodisiac Lounge Volume 1 to be the theme song for this creative endeavor. Definitely check out more of their music at WorldwideGrooveCorporation.com. Thank you again for listening, and most importantly, thank you for being you. I hope you and your family have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you and everybody, bud. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy holidays, guys. Cheers.